Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and in this video, I wanted to answer a question. I thought it was a pretty good question from Alpha Nerd Gaming. They left a comment on my video about FDM printing versus resin printing, and they wanted to know what my space was looking like for my resin 3D printing setup, and if I can share that. So that's what this video is going to be about. So not only am I gonna tell you this setup and approximately how much space that I'm using, but I'm also gonna show you how this space works in action. All right, so here's what I have here. Now, I'm just in my garage, and this is just in a, against the wall in my garage. And I have everything set up on this table right here. Now, this is not a large table. This table is about four feet this way, and then about two feet front to back. So it's not a big table underneath here. This is just one of those Walmart mainstays tables that right now are way too expensive for what they are, but it's not a big table at all. This is the AnyCubic Photon Mono 4K. It is a small resin 3D printer. And this is the AnyCubic Wash and Cure 2.0 that goes hand in hand with this. And then I also have on the table some of the things that I use most frequently when it comes to uh, cleaning up these prints and uh, preparing them for curing. Now there are a lot of resin 3D printers that are bigger than this, but if you kind of just look at the space in between this printer and the wash and cure station, even with a larger printer, if it was a bit wider and even if it's a bit taller, it should still be sufficient space. I think the most important thing here is your workflow and how you just have everything set up so that you can seamless, seamlessly go from one thing to another without getting all mixed up and jumbled up. So I'm gonna show you that process right now with this base all right so first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this lid off and it tends to get a little bit fused so I kind of have to twist it to get it off but these handles here these handles are extremely helpful I do recommend that you print yourself one of these handles and fill them in if you have them so that you can easily lift these up so you can keep your lid away from uh, keep it from getting all cloudy and nasty looking so I'm gonna take this off here and just put it right here on this mat. And I also highly recommend getting one of these mats, a brand name for them are like slap mats, but you can go on Amazon and get like generic versions of them for pretty cheap. I think there's a link in the description to this particular one. Um, and it's really, really convenient. You put all your resin prints on here and it's a lot easier to clean. Uh, so here is the base. This is the base that I printed out. This is for my Gray Hulk that I printed and painted. You can check out that video if you're interested in that. But I'm gonna get this one all cleaned up. So like I said, I think that the workflow is the most important thing here. So I just kind of have everything in this one area. And once I put these gloves on, I don't remove them. I just keep them on until the process is done. So first, let me scrape this off of the plate. And everything just comes right down on this slap mat. It makes it really easy for me to clean up. I've got myself some 91% isopropyl alcohol right here, so I can just put it on this shop towel and clean that up. Um, what I also have here on this table, this is the first wash right here that has some dirty IPA inside of it. So what I tend to do is just take this whole thing here and I just put it inside of this bucket or this uh, container. I close that down. I'll come back to it for in, a, in a minute. And now I'm just going to clean the excess resin here. So I just grab myself some isopropyl alcohol, pour it on this little uh, shop towel, and then I just start to wipe down the surface, I wipe down the scraper. And this is just a habit of mine. Even if I was going to do a print immediately after this, I still feel the need to clean the plate like every time. So just a little bit of IPA on here. Then I wipe down the metal part of the plate, turn it around, wipe off the back side, get it all nice and cleaned up. And another important thing to note here is I am inside of a garage, which is, um, you know, it, it's, it's open, it's not insulated. So in the summer it's hot, in the winter it's cold. So, you know, there's plenty of airflow in here. So I don't have to worry about resin fumes, you know, really bothering me or anything like that. So if space is an issue for you, um, then you have to consider whether or not it's going to be 
uh, you know, worth it to take a little bit of a risk with your health if you are going to be in a really tight, confined space with resin fumes. If you can vent it outside, that's great, but if not, that is something to consider. All right, so now that I got this plate cleaned up, I'm going to put it back on the printer, tighten it down, take the lid, put it back on, and now this is done. I'm done with this machine. I'm going to turn it off and I have this extra space right here if I need it for anything. All right. So now I'm going to go right back over here to this uh, dirty IPA. I close down this lid and then with it well, facing away from me, I just swirl it around to get that, uh, get that excess resin off of the model off of the support. Sometimes I take the supports off before putting it inside of this uh, first wash bucket here, container, and sometimes I don't. Uh, but I'm just gonna give this a good once over. I think that's pretty much good enough. Put that down here. And then underneath the table, because you still have space underneath the table, I've got this big basket <laughs> of supports and uh, there's, there's a failed print in there as well. So I keep this under the table, it's super filled right now. I need to take this out into the sun so that it can cure so I can throw it away. But that makes it convenient for me because now I can take this print and I can remove these supports. Ooh, these one, this one came off pretty easily. All right, so I can just easily remove these supports and I'll just put it down right there. Wipe my hands off with this microfiber towel that's only used over here and then just slide it right back under the table. All right, so now I can start the wash process here. So I take the lid off of the wash and cure station, put that over to the side I'll take this rotating plate, put that right there, and now the wash and cure bucket in which I need to change the IPA out of this, but that'll be at a later time. I turn that on, lift this up. I'm gonna slide this base into it, put it back down. Pop the lid on. I don't even secure it because it's not like it's gonna come flying up or anything. And then I just put this on. I'm gonna put it on four minutes. I usually do five, but I'm just gonna do four for now. And I'm just gonna let this run for four minutes. And while this is happening, I can take this, uh, this shop towel here and just like cooking, you know, just kind of clean as I go. So I got all these little excess bits and pieces from supports just trying to get them into a little pile. Just kind of sweep them into my hands and then I have a little garbage can over here and I can just put that right there. And yeah, and right now I've done the getting the model off the plate, cleaning it in the first IPA wash, cleaning down my surface, removing the supports, and I still have plenty of space right here you know so if i just really wanted to optimize my space i can just put something down right there i can take this little toothbrush and put this toothbrush in here i got this long toothpick for getting rid of hard to reach supports i could put my microfiber towel on top of the first ipa basket and this is how much space i have left and I know a lot of people say that resin 3D printing is really, really messy, and it can be, but it also can be really tame if you have your procedures in order. It doesn't have to be messy. My hands are not covered in resin. These gloves are pretty much dry. I still wouldn't touch them with bare skin, you know, but hey, it's not a messy process once you get the process down. All right, so I'm gonna let this finish washing and then uh, we'll come back and we can finish things up. All right, and I am back. Apologies for talking kind of fast. I just don't wanna keep you here too long. Now this is nice and done and complete. And honestly, this is probably gonna be the messiest part of uh, resin 3D printing because now this is soaked in IPA and now I have to take this out and again, 
on this slat mat. I'm just gonna call it a slat mat. I can just put it down right there, and because it's covered with IP with um with IPA and you know, residual resin, then yeah, it's going to leave some wetness right there. And that's exactly why you have something like this so that you can have it contained. It has these raised edges around it. So it's not going to be leaking off and going onto the table or going onto the floor. So now that I'm done with that, I have enough space to put this wash and cure bucket off to the side. In fact, I can make a little bit more space, move it a little bit further over like that. And then I can take this plate and put it right here to prepare it for the uh, curing phase. And then what I also like to do at this point is I take a little bit of this IPA from here and I have this little toothbrush and I just pour a little bit on the toothbrush and then some of the extra IPA goes down into the mat. So I just give it a little bit of a dab, a dip into it. And then I just give, it, give this base, give this model a brush. So if you can't see what I'm doing, that's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm just giving it a little bit of a brush here. And that is just to kind of try to get rid of any um, excess resin mixed with IPA that might have been, been just sitting inside of, a, inside of a crevice or something that's kind of hard to get out. And another reason is because when that cures, it has a tendency to leave a shiny spots. And that's not a huge deal to me. But if I got the time, which I do right now, then I just try to clean that up, you know, no problemo. All right, so let's get this nice and clean. Got to try to be kind of delicate about this part. Because this base has some really delicate little tiny pieces on it which I've already accidentally destroyed a small part of it, but uh, I can always glue it back on. All right, so this is pretty much done. Next, I got myself a little space heater right here, just slightly off camera. So what I do is I turn on this little space heater and that's how I dry uh, these prints. There might be some people that will say, don't do that. But look, in my experience and a whole bunch of stuff that I've printed, I've always dried them this way and I've not had any negative effects. It doesn't leave any weird markings or, or scars or like horrible warps or anything. It's never done that. You know, I just keep the heat at a reasonable distance. I don't put it straight up like super close to the heater. I'm probably about a good I don't know, probably like a foot away from it. I can still feel the heat with my hands. And then I just kind of let it dry the pieces this way. Um, and do make sure that they are dry before you cure them. I think that's the best practice, but you totally do not have to air dry them. I think I saw this one post where someone said that you had to let it air dry for several hours. And in my experience, that's not necessary at all not necessary. You do not need to wait several hours for something to air dry. I've been using this space heater. It has IPA. This IPA evaporates a lot more quickly than water does. So it doesn't even take a long time for uh, this to get pretty dry. And you can look at it and tell when it's dry. So I'm just sort of looking at it here. Yeah, this is, this is dry. This is dry at this point. So I'm just gonna turn off this heater and I just I don't touch the heater when my gloves are not on. That's part of the contaminated side of things. So now I just pop that down on my wash and cure station, grab the lid by the handle, put it back on, set the cure time. I'm gonna say four minutes is probably overkill, but so what, it's still gonna look the same this gray resin and I'm going to let that cure for four minutes and uh, this point I am uh, completely done. I'm going to keep my gloves on until the very last moment where I can lift up this lid. I'll have one glove on. I'll pick this up with my ungloved hand, put this back down with my gloved hand and then I can take this base upstairs and put Hulk on him, see how he fits and then I can come back and prime it and paint it and all that other good stuff. But as you can see that's how much space that was required to do that print on this AnyCubic Photon Mono 4K. And it'll be the same thing even if you maxed out this build plate. There's, there's plenty of space here, especially if you have a bigger mat like this that can stretch all the way across the table or maybe even a couple of them. So you can have more surface to work with as far as where you're gonna get your IPA, where you're gonna get your resin uh, drippings. You know, they're always gonna be on this mat. So yeah, 
You got yourself enough space to put this four foot table this way and two feet this way. And assuming that you're in a reasonably ventilated place, it does not take a lot of space at all. Just make sure that it's a dedicated space and not some place where you also eat and congregate and do a lot of things. Uh, that would be the best for your health. All right, so that's it, you guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video, and thank you again for uh, inspiring this video, Alpha Nerd Gaming. And, uh, and if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching again. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you soon.